Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Another Fetch Quest by Rockwall Games. This game plays two to seven players. It takes roughly mm, 30 to 45 minutes to play and is for 11 year olds and up. And in the game, Another Fetch Quest, you are going to be attempting to quest. You will be gathering quests, placing them on your notice board, and then hopefully being able to accept the challenge or be challenged to do so and complete them with your specific unique character abilities and stats. Along with your stats and abilities, you're also going to get loot cards. These guys here are going to be able to be utilized when trying to complete the quests of the game. This is kind of a take on an MMO. You know what an MMO is? No. It's a multi-massive online role-playing game, like World of Warcraft. Uh, this is kind of like a joke or a parody of those type of games, because on those games, there's a ton of quests you have to do, and they're all fetch quests. They're all uh, not the greatest. You're not fighting the dragon or slaying the ogre. Uh, you're not going out of your way to, like, defeat the grand bad guy. What you're doing instead is uh, the alchemist needs some, some, some back hair from an ogre or maybe uh, you need to throw a chicken 50 feet. Or perhaps you have to acquire an invitation to the ball. So a lot of like basic, not so exciting quests you have to do in order to achieve the level you wanna be at in order to do the fun stuff, right? And that's what fetch quests are. And there's a ton of them and a ton of MMOs. And this is kind of a parody of that game. Alicia and I play this along with Callie and uh, we're going to go ahead and tell you how to set the game up, how to play it, and then uh, what we think about it. You ready? Yes. Let's go. All right, so how do I set up another Fetch quest. Well, what you're going to need to do is you're going to gather a character, and there are seven different choices you can pick from. You can choose Zeno, the warrior prince, or maybe Jack of all, Tratus, or um, Sorkana, the mediocre, and uh, other wonderful characters of those natures. And you're going to uh, get an ability with those characters, and you're also going to get stat points. And uh, in each of the stats, you're going to have a certain number, like 10, 7, and Four. And these are your current uh, levels of these abilities. And in order to complete your trials, you'll have to have these numbers. You have to utilize your ability to change uh, certain colored numbers to other numbers. And then if all else fails, you have these handy dandy loot cards. These cards are basically what you get uh, when participating in the loot phase at the beginning of a round. And uh, you'll be able to utilize these to help you defeat certain quests that you might not be able to defeat. And I think we all use these cards uh, fairly well mm -hmm. when it came down to what we needed to do in order to succeed. Uh, sometimes it didn't work in our favor, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, when you start the game, you get your character, you're going to get two loot cards, you're going to give somebody the notice board, that'll be the first starting player. You'll place out all the check marks and the X marks into like a bin near all the rest of the players, and then you're going to have the three different die set aside near all players as well. Shuffle the quests and the loot decks as well, and you're ready to go begin the game uh, by starting with one of the three phases. So there are three phases in the game, and it's in this handy dandy rule book. You have the loot phase, you have the wager phase, and then you have the challenge phase. Phage? Phase? And in the loot phase, you're going to do what? You're gonna take a loot card. Yeah, that's, that's what you're gonna do. You start with two, you draw up to three at the beginning of the game, and uh, you can only have how many in your hand ever? Three. And if you ever have more, you have to? Discard it. That's right. Very, very simple. These cards are used whenever you're able to challenge the notice board, which is where all the quests are going to be. And if you have them, you can use them as many as you would like, but you don't gain any more back other than the number of loot cards, which is one, at the beginning of the loot phase. So you have to kind of use them sparingly and when you think it most matters. To begin the game, uh, after the loot phase, you're going to move on to the next phase. It's very simple. It's called the wager phase. And the wager phase is always going to start with the person who has the notice board. The notice board player is going to draw how many cards from the quest deck? You remember? Three cards. Yeah, you draw three cards, and then what do you do? And then you put them in the notice board. How many? Two of them. That's right. And then you discard one. Very, very easy. Uh, my suggestion is you actually discard it face down, but I don't think the rules specify, so in this case I'll go ahead and discard it face up. These are the requirements in order for you to complete the notice board. These are the different quests. So these are secret. These are go face down on the notice board, and there'll be something like this. A two blue, and maybe a two red, and they'll go right down here. After the player who has the notice board, who starts the round off, places two quests there, then he'll have the opportunity to say, what? I'm going on a fetch quest. That's right. I'm going on a fetch quest. And everybody has the opportunity to say, no, I challenge you. And if you are challenged, you will reveal these quest cards and you will attempt to defeat them. And how you defeat them is really simple. In this case, if it was just these two, which uh, would you ever challenge me with two cards? 
No. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I need a two red and I need a two blue. I have a 10 red, a seven blue, and I have a four green. This would be easily accomplishable. I would successfully achieve my goal and I would gain one of these check marks. If for some reason I had to deal with like 30 red and like 70 blue, uh, I would not succeed and I would get an X, which means I have lost. And if I get how many of these? Three X's. Then you are? You lose. That's right, you lose. <laughs> and if you get three check marks, it's the same way you win. Now, if I say I'm going on a fetch quest and I end up not uh, being challenged, what ends up happening is the player to my left, a player in clockwise order, will have an opportunity to also draw three cards, select two of them, and place them down on the notes board, discarding the other card. And once again, they will say, I'm going on a fetch quest. And if no one else says I challenge you, then it will continue to pass from player to player, no matter the number of players in the game. And what's gonna end up happening is eventually after a certain number of these cards have been drawn, placed on the notice board, uh, people are gonna start getting a little squirmish because the numbers are gonna start increasing, they're gonna start rising, and uh, people are not going to be sure how many numbers are actually here combined. Because when you flip over these cards here, you're gonna find all of them for all the different types and you're going to apply them together. So if this is a three, a two, and a three, a three, a two, and a two, then that's going to total up seven. <laughs> in which case you'll have to check to see if you can even accomplish that. In this case, I have exactly seven, so I would be fine. Uh, but there are other ones too. You're gonna have, ooh, and, oh, there's an extra blue one. Never mind. I'd have plus one to my blue that I have to deal with, which would be eight, a two red, and a one green, which would, these would be no problem. I'd be able to defeat these. But in this case, I wouldn't. However, I would check my abilities, and some of the abilities have the ability to let you switch and swap certain things, or I could use my loot cards. If I was down one blue, I could use this card here. This is the new scrying stone, who dis? <laughs> Okay, I get it. Discard one blue card uh, from the notice board. So you can choose one of the blue cards in the notice board, discard it, and then I would successfully be able to accomplish that goal. So loot cards will come in handy throughout the game. And that's basically the idea of getting the game. If you fail, you get an X. If you succeed, you get a check mark. And then discard all the quest cards, pass the notice board to the next player going clockwise. Everybody once again draws a a loot card. That's right, excellent job. And places <laughs> it down into their little stash. And we once again continue by drawing quests, placing them on the notice board and saying, I'm going on a fetch quest. She's perfect at this. And that's the idea of the game, another fetch quest. So let's go ahead and discuss the game now. And I've said it enough to where I'm gonna have to edit out enough of the swear word, but you get the idea. The game has a little like exclamation points and like hashtag symbols. So it's not actually a curse word, which makes me very, my first thing I thought was when I saw the game is how are we gonna find this on Google? Maybe it would have been better if it was another F apostrophe ing fetch quest, because then you could find it. Otherwise, I'd have to type in like uh, hashtag uh, dollar sign percentage and sign. Like that might be a little bit more challenging. And I don't know how they're gonna go about doing that exactly. So I'd probably actually look at the company name Rockwall Games originally uh, before I would try and spell that on Google. Um, but naming aside, uh, what did you think about the game itself? How it plays? It was a fun game to play. Um, it was pretty easy to follow the rules. Um, and yeah, it was enjoyable. Yeah, did you enjoy the idea of like placing the cards down and having to decide like when was a good time? Like, did you have a, an idea of when you wanted to uh, actually go on the quest compared to give it to somebody else? Yeah, I tried to go on as many quests as possible in the beginning. Yeah, so that, and she got ended up getting two good ones and then she ended up getting two X's. And it kind of puts you in an interesting spot because the next time you go on a quest, mm -hmm. you're either going to win the game or you're going to lose the game. But players were also nervous about letting her go on these quests because if she succeeds, she instantly wins. And so we would constantly force ourselves to take the quest from her so that, she, plan. So that she couldn't do it. But she knowingly knew we would do that, and so she put in a bunch of really terrible things for us into the notice board, making it almost impossible for us to achieve victory. Uh, another thing to note, too, is the loot cards and the quest cards have these 1d6 numbers on them. And basically, whenever you see these guys here, you're going to be rolling a die. So this one here is 1d6 of green. You'll roll this, and that will be the number you use when applying it to the total of either your side or on the... Uh, quest board side, you know? Um, and this can really make or break the game. 
I know, I noticed like in one instance, I'm like, oh, I've easily got this. Like I've got all the components. As long as I don't roll a five or a six on this, I win the game. And then I rolled a five or a six and I lost the game. Uh, and so this provi pre prevents, pre provides a lot of like chance as far as what can pop up in here, mm -hmm. but it's all about what you place in here. It's not a really luck based game so much. It's more about what you think your opponents put into the notice board, what you think their ob objective is. Do they want to go on the quest? Do they not want to go on the quest? And uh, how sure are you that you can accomplish this goal? Because just because you can, um, you've put in a bunch of cards that kind of help yourself, doesn't mean that your opponents did the same thing. And so when it comes back around to you, it's likely that you're gonna have to deal with, if you're Xeno the Warrior Prince, a bunch of green ones uh, that maybe she or Callie has put in there to screw me over, to mess me up when I'm trying to accomplish my goal. I put in a bunch of red ones, those don't matter because in the end there's 10 green ones and I cannot win the, the I can't win the quest. And they do it on purpose even if they don't themselves have green. It's a very like um, tricky, you can like kind of mess with your opponents in that way. Yeah. Um, and so I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, it reminded me of the game called Welcome to the Dungeon. It's a game you haven't played before, but it functions the same way. Basically what happens is you'll draw a card from the dungeon, it's a monster with a number, you put it down, face down to the dungeon, and then um, you will pass, and the next player can either choose to like put one in or like remove an, a, a quest item from the character that is going in, which is anybody who decides to go in. And it kind of goes around in that same way until eventually somebody goes into the, into the dungeon with the character and whatever items they have left and attempts to beat all the monsters. And if they fail, they lose, they get the X and et cetera, et cetera. And it functions very similar to that, but this probably has a little bit more mm, options, a little bit more gameplay, I suppose, uh, component-wise uh, than, than that game. Uh, but they play very similarly. So if you have one, you probably do not need the other. But if you haven't played that game before, uh, then this one it would be a, a good choice as well. All right, uh, the components, I'm guessing, well, I'm fairly certain that this is a prototype, so I'm not gonna be too picky about any of this stuff, but uh, quest cards were great, the loot cards were great. I like the different choices of the quests and the like theme and the flavor text. You probably don't know a whole lot about fetch quests, but now that I've explained it, do you understand kind of the concept of it? Yeah. And, like sweeping the alchemist's lab. Like, that's not really a very exciting quest. It's not something you really want to do is like go in and like do some manual labor when you're an adventurer, but they make you do these things in the, these games. And I think the parody works very, very well for this game. And the artwork uh, works really well as well for all the cards. I really enjoy the cards with the backgrounds. But I do wish that these boards here had a little bit more going on with them. Maybe even uh, more of a full art style with the characters kind of with a background in some way. Uh, just a little bit too bland on just the character pieces here. However, everything else I really, really enjoyed. And the comedy works uh, really, really well for me as a nerdy gamer who played uh, MMORPGs, World of Warcraft, for over five years. Met my wife on uh, World of Warcraft, so I'm uh, an exceptionally nerdy gamer. Uh, so this kind of rang for me pretty well. Uh, you, theme, did you enjoy the theme? Did you kind of get the idea of it when you were playing it? Yeah, I mean, I haven't played those games, so I was, at first, I was like, what is a fetch quest? But when you talked about Animal Crossing, I was like, oh. Yeah, I explained to her, the way I explained <laughs> to her is in Animal Crossing, uh, you have the little seagull dude, what's his name? Gulliver. Okay, so that's just so there's her knowledge compared to mine. Uh, and he's <laughs> asleep on the sand and his cell phone is broken and you need to go around and acquire uh, pieces of like metal and then you just give it to him and he fixes his phone and then yeah. the next day his phone is broken again and you have to do the same thing over and over again uh, ad infinitum. That's a fetch quest. And uh, they're not fun, but you do it every day because it gives you something that you want. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> I, I like the idea of that, putting something like that into a parody. It works very well for me. Uh, overall, though, a solid, fun little game. This one works really well. I think my only qualms, other than the uh, the choice of wording uh, for the, uh, the the box here, because it's going to be hard to be searched, is the fact that anybody can just say, no, you're, I challenge you. I actually prefer it, just like in the game Welcome to the Dungeon, I'd prefer it if only the player to your left can challenge you, because that's the only player who's going to be going next into the dungeon. So they're the only person whose skin is on the line. Whereas you'd be upset if you were the one who next goes into the dungeon, and the person next to you calls out 
the person next to, you know, calls up the person before you to go in and they easily accomplish the goal. And you're like, no, I, I knew that she was gonna accomplish that easily. I wish it was my turn. So I would only, pre I prefer it in that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that, it's kind of like, why is Bill over there, like fifth player down, telling her when to go into the dungeon when, or not dungeon, but you know, the quests, doing all the fetch quests, when I know I can do it, so I want to tell her. Uh, that was my one thing. A little bit on the port player board arts, but otherwise it's a very solid game. It's very fun. Three players works okay. More players in a, t in a game like this is better. I think it actually probably sweet spots, probably around five players would be my guess. You'd probably think it'd be more fun playing with multiple players as well, I imagine. Yeah, I think um, it kind of worked in my favor though, because I knew that the cards kept piling up at a certain point, so I tried to get as many piles in the beginning as possible, and then I got, I left all of the bigger piles at the end for you. Yeah, because it goes two, four, six, eight, ten, right? And eight is probably doable. Ten is where it gets risky, and at twelve, you're probably pretty screwed. But it's possible to beat those areas. So it starts being a, a game of like liar's dice and a game of like, when do you, how much luck do you think you really have based on your loot cards and whatnot? Um, overall rating, accepted, approved, a very fun game, another blanking fetch quest. Yes? Yeah. Good. Check out the game in the link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game for yourself if you would like, a game of wits, wagers and dirty deeds in the village of Dorp. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, go ahead and check out the YouTube channel and all of our playlists. You can also go ahead and like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. There's a subscribe button somewhere in this area, in my chesticle area here, and there's a uh, notification button that you can press as well if you would like. And uh, if you'd like, you can join us on our live streams. And you know what our live streams are? When? Yeah, when? Sunday at 6.30. PM. PST for those of you that are not uh, where we are located and you can see us play games just like this one and In fact, we are playing this game next Sunday next Sunday this coming Sunday. Yeah, this coming Sunday We'll be playing another blanking blank blank uh, next Sunday And uh, of course if you'd like to you donate on patreon one buck a month goes a long way Helps us with giveaways helps us with our discord helps us with shipping and etc etc Moonshell a mermaid game is hopefully almost being done being finished uh, shipping out. Uh, we're gonna have an update tomorrow. We're gonna go ahead and check out, uh, make sure everything has gotten to where it needs to be. And for those of you who are still curious about whether your game is gonna be here or not, you can contact us and let us know on our email and we will get back to you with uh, some, some type of information for you. Uh, but regardless though, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys next, next time. time. gonna be great with dolphin noises <laughs> you know it'd also be great but random is <laughs> while I'm talking <laughs> wait thank you for watching the unfiltered game of war game review okay it's something along those lines you can you can be creative if you want no okay don't be <laughs> don't be creative then just don't <laughs>